How's everyone doing today? Before we get started, I'm I'm going to show you a few pictures before we start drawing. But um, in the meantime, I want to show you the materials that I'm going to have today. I have a regular pencil eraser. Um, and I have two kinds of pens that we can use, that I, I think I'm going to use a, um, a brush pen today, but you could use any kind of black or dark colored ink to go over our pencil drawing. And then I have a few colored pencils. This is a red and a brown. Um, I will probably use a black one as well. And I also have a, um, some watercolors. Um, I want to show you guys how to do a cool, really cool technique that is really quick and you can get really nice um, kind of rendered results with it in a short amount of time. So um, let me get this set up here. If you, and you can use whatever materials you want. Um, we're going to be focusing a little bit on Beetles, specifically Weevil, um, which is a group within the beetle order, um, anatomy. So as long as you're drawing and getting familiar with those body parts, that's all that I, um, all that uh, will make me happy. So let me just, okay, I've got everything. Let me pull up those pictures really quick, one second. Um, so here we are. This is a weevil. And as I said before, these are um, in the order of Coleoptera, which is beetles, which is the most numerous group of insects um, species wise, and also the most numerous group of insects or the most numerous group of species in all life. Every one in one in every five of all living creatures is a beetle. So there's a lot of different kinds of beetles. Um, I'm really glad that we get to talk to talk about them today um, and about weevils in particular, because most people don't like them. They're often seen as a crop pest. And um, while that is true, they do attack some plants that we like, They're, that has a place within an ecosystem and they are also pollinators on occasions. They do hold um, important roles as well. So this is a rose uh, curculio beetle, also weevil, that's just a common name. Um, but I want us to look at this beetle and all its different body parts. The most, I think, characteristic thing about weevils, the best way to recognize them is they usually have this really long <laughs> kind of funny snout, which I think makes them so cute. They look like little elephants. Um, and it's just, it's very interesting to notice how long it is in relation to the rest of that head. The head is so small. It's this area here. It's not even this whole thing. It's just this little bit. Um, and then these are four different types of weevils. I wanted to show you how the body plan can vary kind of greatly, but they always have this long snout. And this one is short, but it's still much more of a snout than you will see on other beetles. And again, they're insects. So we're noticing that there are three body segments, the head here, the thorax right below that, and then the biggest part is the abdomen. And there are six legs, all insect characteristics. This is another, that same type of weevil, Rose curculio. And as you can see from this photo and the name, they do live on rose plants. Most people don't like them because they drill holes through them. Um, but you know, look at them, they're so beautiful. They're like jewels in and of themselves. I think they're just as pretty as the roses. <laughs> Uh, this is another really common weevil that you'll see in the garden. They also live on roses, and I wanted to show you these two because they live on the same plant, but they look very different. Um, and this one in particular, I think this is the Fuller's rose weevil, has a shorter snout, but you can still see that it's there. 
instead of um, the head kind of just ending above the eyes like a normal beetle would. This is a cool one. I love this snout. Um, and you can see this one is pollinating a flower. Uh, this is a female flower on a giant palm, which is found in South America, and they are the only pollinator for this plant. So I wanted to make sure that you guys saw um, that they do hold important roles in the plant world beyond drilling holes. This is that male flower. I just wanted to show you because they're so pretty. Weevils also come in all kinds of beautiful colors. This one has this wonderful like aqua iridescent combined with the brown um, and that characteristic kind of like fuzzy leg and antenna. And then I threw this one in for fun. <laughs> also to show you what beautiful colors they can come in. This is, I believe, a tropical weevil, um, which, and they also vary in size. Most of them are very small, but this one's about an inch long, I would say. Although you would never see it on a tricycle. Okay, really quick before we start drawing, I want to say those body parts again. Head, really small at the top. They have that long snout, which is called a rostrum, specific to weevils. The snout is called the rostrum. The rostrum. Um, below the head, that smaller body segment in the middle is the thorax. Below that, the large segment is the abdomen. And the abdomen encases the wings and um, the wing cases, which are just modified wings to be hard. They're sclerotized with extra proteins. Those are called the elytra. All right, so I want to do kind of a simple drawing highlighting those body parts. I'm going to grab my pencil, my regular pencil. Um, and I want to do a quick a uh, top view, like most of the pictures we looked at, but also a side view so we can kind of see um, how those body parts fit together in total. So I'm just first going to sketch out kind of really roughly where I want those body parts. So it's going to kind of going to look like a snowman with a really long oval. Actually, let me do this bigger for you guys so you can see a little more clearly. Snowman with a really long oval bottom part like that. And that's just a really general like plan of where we're gonna put things. And then for the side view, same thing, but going obviously horizontal. Uh, and, and for this drawing, I wanna focus on that uh, Rose Curculio beetle because it has such a beautiful red color. I'm gonna start on this top view that we have and those two top circles that we do, I'm gonna kind of bring some lines down and join them a little bit and make this top section much smaller. going to kind of look like a Russian, a Russian nesting doll, that general shape, and narrow the sides of that bottom circle a bit. Erase some of those lines I don't need anymore. And then flatten it on the bottom. And then for the abdomen, that biggest body segment, I'm going to swing out two lines at the bottom of the ab the thorax up here and they're almost straight but they curve down a bit at the sides and then this shape is actually not so much an oval I did lay it out with that shape that um form but it squares out quite a bit kind of like this I made it maybe a little too square so I'm going to find that shape around the corners at the bottom and erase what I don't need and then I'm going to find kind of the middle of the square shape and put just the light line in. That's where those wing cases come together and they fold out when the beetle wants to take flight. But I'm not going to bring it all the way up to the top. Another part of the anatomy that's common to most beetles 
is the scutellum, which is this little triangle right here, right where the thorax and the abdomen meet. That's the scutellum. And we'll do a label for this too. I think that will be helpful after we finish the basic drawing. Okay, so I'm just refining these lines. This abdomen kind of comes in with that like a same soft curve at the top here. And then it's like a round bridge between those two things. And this head, I can see that I still made it a little bit too large. I'm going to make it even a little bit smaller like that and then round it in. Just like that, erase those lines so we don't get confused. And now for the rostrum, that snout we all love. I'm gonna bring it out pretty far from the head. And it gets kind of round and spade-like at the top. And the antenna actually come off from the end of the snout, not near the eyes. The eyes are about here on these beetles, which is pretty unusual for insects. Usually the antenna come out from between the eyes right here, but on these weevils, they come out at the end of the snout, which does make some sense. That's where, you know, we, we move leading with our heads. So it makes sense to have your sensory organs there but it just looks a little funny the first time you see it. Okay, so those antenna, they're not super long, but they do have these, like it gets wider at the end, those kind of clubbed points. And I'm just gonna drop in some quick lines to suggest that there's segments on those because they can kind of move around like this. And if you didn't draw those eyes in already, I'm gonna refine those a little bit. and. You can see that they're not perfect circles at this angle. Sorry, this light's a little harsh. They're not perfect circles. They're kind of like this sort of shape with a little bit of a pointy oval. Okay, we've done that. That's a basic body plan. Let's uh, make sure we get those legs in there. So all insects, they have six legs and they all attach to the thorax, which sometimes, I don't know if you noticed in some of those pictures, it looks like they're coming off down here, but that's just, um, there are like more jointed segments that you can't quite see the way that they're folding underneath the body, but they do connect at the bottom, those two legs that, um, that come out here, they do connect at the bottom of the thorax. So, I'm going to start with those two top legs, kind of at the corners of this smaller square shape we drew. And they're going to be, I'm just going to draw two rectangles to kind of plan out where they will be. And then at an angle, not quite 90 degrees tall, but coming out a little bit draw a thinner rectangle that's connecting. And then again, we're gonna change angles, come out to the side here. And this one, I'll draw it larger over here so you can see, it's gonna be kind of this shape. That's a little extreme, but it will be a little bit wider at the end there. Okay, next leg, I'm gonna start it about here. And you'll notice that I'm working side to side. It just helps me keep everything symmetrical. That's something that's really important when you're drawing bugs is that you have a suggestion of that symmetry body plan, bilateral symmetry. Everything is the same as if you have folded open a book or something down that middle line. Okay, two rectangles. I'm going to have this leg kind of come down this way, this next rectangle. And these will be just a little bit shorter than the ones we drew up here. And then again, changing angle. And for those last legs, I think I want to kind of have them 
I don't like it there. I'm not like this. And th these will be uh, larger segments than on the other legs. And another helpful way to do this when you're thinking about composition is if you don't want to draw the whole rectangle shape, just focus on like that zigzag. And that can help you plan like where you want those legs to end up. And I think I like that. I think we'll go with this. And I'll just fill in those rectangular shapes as we did the other ones. That looks a little long to me now. I'm actually going to move that last segment up a bit. And that's the basic body plan. Um, I will start inking this one. I think that um, we'll see if we have time to get to this other drawing because I want to make sure to show you the watercolor process first. So let's start with this. Um, I will show you a little more detail in the leg segments when we get to that inking, but for now I want to start with the head. Um, I think for the head, we pretty much have the drawing together. So I'm just going to go over those pencil lines. Actually, you know, I'm not sure if this is waterproof. I'm going to switch hands. Make sure you use a waterproof pen for this um, for this drawing since we'll be using watercolor. Unless you're not using watercolor, use whatever pen you want. Okay, I've switched pens. This is waterproof. Okay, so next I am going to, I'm not going to draw the top of the head, that line all the way across. I'm actually going to bring it straight out into that rostrum, into the snout. And draw that all the way up to the bottom of where the antenna are coming out. And then the same thing. I'm going to join those two lines, this one coming out for the antenna. And I'm just tracing those pencil lines. I want to keep this pretty simple since this is paying attention to anatomy or rather a basic anatomy plan, not all the fine poodly bits. Okay. Now I'll finish that snout comes out a little spade like and I'm going to add a little more form to it it's just a little bumpier there at the top than I had drawn it in my pencil sketch I'm going to finish these lines at the head bring those down and I think I might add one line running up the rostrum on the inside to suggest a little bit of that form because it's kind of a tubular shape like this. Just run it up the side there. And then stop again where the antenna is. And at the top of the antenna, continue that line and follow the curve of that spade shape. Next, we'll move on to the abdomen. I'm again just kind of tracing this shape that we drew. Oh, I'm sorry, thorax. I said abdomen. This is the thorax. And when we, once we have our line on that shape, I'm going to do that same thing with the line I did on the snout, but along the bottom of the thorax there, because there is a little kind of ridge in the exoskeleton there that kind of comes up. I want to make sure we emphasize that a bit. Okay, next, the abdomen. Again, tracing that shape, I am going to bump out that top just a little bit by bringing in the line. There is just a really slight kind of bulge in the form there. You can see that I brought this in just a little bit to kind of emphasize that bulge. It's not a strong bulge, but it's there and that means it's important. And I think this is actually a little too round. So as I ink it, I'm going to just kind of bring that line up a bit more strongly. And the scutellum, beautiful triangle shape. 
And I'm not going to draw this line all the way down to the bottom. I'm actually going to mirror that triangle shape just a little bit before it gets to the end. All right, now let's do those legs. Um, I will do a test over here. Actually, no, I think you guys can see pretty well looking at my screen. So we're going to refine the shape of these legs a little bit. You can do this in pencil um, if you're not ready to move on to the inking shape. Um, but we're going to kind of change the angle inside some of these rectangles to make them a little more descriptive of form. So let's start by, let's do this all by segments. Let's do all these first segments on the legs and then we'll move out because they're similar on each one. So this first segment on each leg is, um, I think, the biggest one. And it has some roundness during the midsection like this. And then it gets thinner at both ends. And there's not going to be any really hard points when you're drawing these legs. You can see that um, I kind of curved out the end here, almost like a vase. And I'm going to kind of mirror that shape on each leg. Skinnier by the body, a little bit wider towards the end before it narrows back down. And that kind of lip at the top, like I talked about a vase, it's going to follow the direction of each leg. So this leg, the top leg that we do first is going up. So that lip kind of goes up a little bit. The second leg is kind of going down. So I do that lip going down. Same thing with that last leg, the biggest one. And I'm gonna move on and do the same thing on the other side. And let's do that second section on each leg. I'm going to start here. And these are a little simpler. Um, it's pretty much all the same length, but it does get a little bit wider towards the end. Again, it has that lip. That little bulge and a lip at the end. Same thing on this leg. A little bit wider at the bottom. And the lips, again, same thing, following that direction of the next segment. Other side. Awesome. It's really coming together. Okay, let's do those last parts. This is the trickiest one. I will draw a version over here a little bit bigger so you can see. So this last segment we drew, remember it was kind of like a little bit wider at the end. So this is called um, the tarsus, this entire segment. And it's kind of, it's got a lot of mini segments within this one section. I, I like to plan it out with one shape, but there's actually, depending on the species, um, you know, many, many segments. This one has four, so it's not too complicated, but we're gonna break that down. Um, we're gonna take each of those shapes that we drew and kind of split it into three, like that. And then, Draw two little claws on the end, little grippers. Um, let me try to get this. The light is very bright right now. All right, let's try this. 
Hopefully you guys can see that better. Okay, so we're gonna break it down into those three shapes, draw those two little claws, and then each of those three segments that we broke that we broke this bigger shape into, we're going to make into a segment that's got a very similar shape to these other ones we were drawing. So once you have this down on those shapes, you can kind of follow those lines, bring out that middle segment, curve it down and bring it back like that. So we'll do that on each of these. Curve it out, bring it back in. Curve it out, bring it back in. And you know, this is pretty generalized. I think that on these beetles, it probably looks a bit more like this. Like there's a little more variation within those. So if you can try to match this kind of proportion, that would be good. But um, as long as you get the three segments, I think you're good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and ink those in our actual drawing. Little claws. They're not actually claws. They do function kind of like claws. They help the beetle hold on to things and climb, but they're called uh, tarsal claws. And we're gonna label this drawing after we finish inking. So you will have all of this language for yourself your future self. And on this last leg, I'm gonna make those segments a little bit longer because this whole leg is longer in general. And that tarsus segment should not be the same length as those two shorter legs. All right. I, oops, one thing we forgot, draw in those segments on the antenna. I'm just going to draw kind of lines that curve up a bit from the one side like that. Yay. Before we move on to inking, there's a few more of these like um, little lines I want to add that help describe form. I'm going to add two down here. I'll show you closely in a minute. They're not quite touching that little Y we drew at the bottom, but they're leading off of it in the same direction. And I'm going to add two along these little bulges that we drew, added into the abdomen. I'm going to draw two kind of short ones at the top of the thorax. And then I'm going to draw one on each segment, first segment of each leg. Here. Oops, sorry. It's not on camera. Here, here, and here. All right, we've got our inking done. I'm gonna erase my pencil lines so we can see clearly. It doesn't mess with our watercolor drawing. Let's do some quick, quick labeling. We're not gonna go crazy. Um, but let's remember Three body segments, the rostrum, the snout area, antenna, six legs, and then I'll add a few little things once we get those basics covered. So let's just draw some lines out. I'm going to start with the head. 
going to draw it diagonally here. Head. I'm going to draw a line at that seam angle out from the main branch of the rostrum. R-O-S-T-R-U-M. And then on the other side, I'm going to draw a line out for the antenna. A-N-T-E-N-N-A-E. -E. This composition is a little hard with the thorax. I think that I will draw it out between these two legs. Like that. Thorax, T H O R A X. And lastly, abdomen, A B D O M E N. Sorry, trying to make sure this is <laughs> on camera. Okay, so for the legs, actually, let's not forget the scutellum because that's one of my favorite parts. And I love that word. It's very charming to hear. Um, one rule, rule, quotation marks, when you're doing like a labeled drawing is you don't want your lines to cross and you don't want your lines to cross over too many parts of the body. It just looks confusing. So again, this these legs make it a little bit tricky to label, but I think for the scutellum, I'll draw a line out down this way, like this. Scutellum C, S, C, U, T, E, L, L, U, M. And I believe scutellum means shield, which makes sense with that triangular shape. And it's a lot bigger on other types of beetles and it does really look like a shield. Next, um, let's focus on, I think this leg, this leg on the left for the labeling of the leg parts. Um, sorry, one moment. I was just thinking about composition. So this, remember these, how we do over here, these three segments and the claws. I'm going to do like this kind of label and come down because that is all called the tarsus. T-A-R-S-U-S. -S. This segment just underneath it. That's called the tibia, which might be familiar. We have tibias as well. And following that, closest to the body is the femur, which again should sound familiar. We also have those. And those are spelled tibia, T-I-B-I-A, femur, F-E-M-E-U-R, F-E-M-U-R. Um, lastly, I think it's, we should label the elytra. I think that's a pretty unique characteristic to beetles. Um, and again, the elytra are those two wing cases that cover the abdomen. So I think how I want to do that is to draw a Y shape label that will look like that down here at the bottom. And it will be on the large side. Because it does get a little confusing with all these Y shapes in here. Elytra, and that's spelled E-L-Y-T-R-A. And I think in parentheses, because that's kind of, there's a lot of confusing language in here, we can put wing case. Awesome. All right, let's move on to our watercolors. 
I'm going to speed along this part because we have 20 minutes left. So again, let's remember that rose curculio beetle. It has that beautiful burgundy kind of jewel tone. Um, so I'm going to make sure you can see my palette. I already have some reds mixed up here, but I'm adding a little bit of this magenta. And, you know, we're not going to have time for this side view. I apologize for um, mismanaging that timeline, but I'm going to use that area now as just like a color testing zone. So I think that looks pretty good. I had mixed like a warm red and a cool red or like almost a purple um, to get that. So let's mix up like a good amount of that color and start just kind of filling in certain areas. We're gonna, with this color, focus on the head, um, the thorax and the abdomen. And we're gonna leave that scutellum on the eyes. And when I'm filling in the thorax, actually on all these body parts, I'm going to leave a white curve at the top of each of them like that, make it look shiny. And I'm going to do that on both sides of the abdomen. If you think about the way that this wing case divides down the middle, there would be on both of these bulgers that we drew, there would be a highlight left there. Maybe even one at the bottom, just a small one. Oops, you can barely see that. I'll do it better on the next side. Same thing on the other side. Okay. And we're just laying in pretty flat color. Right now we're gonna add dimension with the colored pencil. Um, and the other parts of this beetle are pretty much like a blackish color. I don't wanna use just a true black. That's kind of always looks really flat in your final artwork. So I'm actually going to clean my brush off first. I'm gonna kind of mix my own black. I'm gonna get some blue. This here is cobalt blue. I'm gonna smack it up here in the corner. And then um, I'm gonna get like a brown, dark brown color. I believe this is sepia, but you could use burnt umber, raw umber, burnt sienna. Um, and you can see once you mix those two colors together, it makes a deep, almost black, but it has like a nicer kind of blue hue to it. Or if you use more brown, it will kind of have like a warmer color to it. I think, hmm, I'll go with this, this color. I think I'm gonna add just a little more pigment so I don't run out of paint. I'm also, I'm gonna add in a little bit of Payne's gray. I just really like that kind of cool tone that that color gives you. Okay, so I've got my brush loaded up. We're just kind of gonna go in a similar way, just fill in most of these areas um, and leave a few highlight zones. I'm gonna color in the whole antenna on the rostrum along where we drew that line, I'm gonna leave a little white space. Like that. Definitely leave a highlight on the eye.
And I think for the legs, the tarsus segments, that's those three thing, those three segments in the closet we drew. I'm just gonna color those all in. Again, kind of going by sections in each leg here. Just it helps the overall drawing remain consistent to work in sections like that sometimes. And um, next, I'm going to color in the tibia, that second segment, and same thing. And for this segment, because it's so skinny, you can kind of just go like, are like kind of right along those two lines and leave the center a highlight. Just kind of close it off where it meets the next segment below it. And if you're also, if you're not working with watercolor, which is perfectly fine, um, you can just follow along with colored pencils or whatever color media you have. Or if you just wanna keep working with pencil, you can do just like a shaded drawing. They're all good options. Okay, next, these last segments are a little more tricky to think about the lighting because they have that big bulge. Um, so I think what we'll kind of do is leave like almost a teardrop shape where that bulge is. Like that. I don't really like the placement of where I left that one. I wish I had made it a little bit the highlight a little bit higher to the leg. I'll try again on this other side and show you. Yeah, I like that better. A little higher. I'm gonna make this a little smaller to match. And you know, this isn't Perfectly accurate lighting. It's a little bit imagined, but for specimen labeled drawings, you kind of want to just make it the most clear for the body segments that you can. Um, last piece of uh, dark color is the scutellum. I'm just going to color in that little triangle. And then once this is dry, mine is the first part, the red is definitely like pretty close to dry on mine. So I'm gonna switch to my colored pencils. And I'll start with um, these, uh, I have a uh, Tuscan red here and a dark umber, but you could kind of use like any reddish tone or any uh, dark brown tone and also like if you want to use a blue colored pencil uh, it looks really nice to introduce a little bit of complementary color even though technically that's green but these are kind of like a red purple beetle Let's see if I can find a purple colored pencil at some point but let's start with the basics I'm going to grab my red first um, and we're going to add in a little bit of shading here to add volume. So let's start with the head, very head centric. And I am going to drop in like a layer of color along the left side of the head. It's, I'm not pressing super hard. I'm just shading a little bit. And you can see you don't have to do a lot of work when you're doing this method to make something look kind of really rendered. And again, I'm thinking about that light source coming down this way, kind of the way that we left those highlights on the thorax and the abdomen. And I'm gonna think, uh, do kind of the opposite side for the shadows. So I'm gonna add a little bit down here on the right side of the head too, where it meets the body where things, where objects are coming together, that's also another place where shadow is going to come. Shadow is going to be seen. So I'm adding some up here because the eye is meeting the head. And 
and it's a little bit hard to see, I think, on camera, but I'm also not bringing my colored pencil all the way to the edge of the black line. I'm letting a little bit of that watercolor show through on that edge. It will be, I'll show you down here, it'll be a little bit easier to see. Um, so I kind I almost connected these two lines, the two ink lines that we drew on the abdomen. And I'm gonna shade in that side, but leave that little edge. It's gonna help give us a lot of dimension without doing any work. So the shapes on this uh, wing case, again, we're thinking about these two bulges here and how it curves in at the end. So we're gonna bring that shadow along that curve and just kind of lightly bring in, the, bring up the pressure, bring down the pressure as you move towards the center of the insect. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side and connect those two lines and shade around the highlight on this side. We don't wanna color that in. We wanna leave that nice and white. Again, around the highlight. And I'm gonna taper it off a little bit at that corner because the light is coming this way. I'm gonna put a bit in where those two body parts meet, but I don't wanna leave that whole part shaded. And I'm going to bring that out into the center along the other side of the highlight on the bottom here. And then because we have these two bulges here at the top, I'm gonna add just a little bit of shading here and here. Because there would there would be like, you know, a slight depression in the shell there. And then the thorax is pretty simple. I'm gonna do the same thing, follow those two lines, but we can shade it as one shape. We don't have to kind of think about dividing it with the wing case like we do on the abdomen. Just like that. Um, I think I'm gonna go back into the abdomen and add a little more shadow down here. I think that I didn't quite capture the way that it comes, it like curves down at the bottom. Just gonna bring up that level of shading to kind of the middle of that body segment like that. And then I'm going to Grab my brown color pencil and just really quickly hit some of like the deepest shadow parts, which would be the opposite of where the highlight is, the opposite shadow. I'm just gonna put a little bit of brown in there to deepen it. And this would be a nice time to use, like if you wanted to throw some blue in, that blue would look really nice as a shadow tone. Just revisiting everywhere that we put a red shadow in. But I'm not putting down as much pigment. I'm just kind of deepening certain areas. And then I'm gonna pick up that red colored pencil again and. Um, Add just a few suggestions of the lines that kind of go down the wing case. I don't want to draw really hard lines, but I'm just, I'm almost going to do like a dotted line like that. And these lines, they're going to kind of follow that scutellum down a little bit. And I'm not going to draw them everywhere 
like down the whole part of the body. I'm actually going to kind of think about it in a similar way to where the shadows and highlights are. So let's start where there's like the most shadow down here. So I'm just gonna drop in a few of those dotted lines following the elytra. See that here? And I'm not gonna bring it all the way up to the top. I'm gonna let it kind of fade out into the middle there. And they're not all gonna be the same length. And they're gonna curve down, which you can't even really see because it's the same color that we use for the shadow, curve down into that, um, following that shape of the abdomen. Same thing on this side. Those almost dotted lines. And then I'm going to do the same thing kind of coming down to the top, but they're not going to touch those dotted lines that we drew at the bottom. I want them to kind of line up a little bit, but I don't want them to touch. I'll do a few as an example and show you. They're going to come down and you can see better here that they're following this curve that of the ink line that we drew. And then they're coming down, but they're not connecting with these lines that we drew down here. And again, not drawing over that highlight. Same thing on both sides. Cool. So that was really quick. That took, you know, just a few minutes, but like, look how rendered that looks. It's pretty cool. Um, I think the last thing that I want to do is do a, the same thing, a simpler version on each of the leg segments. Um, I'm just gonna use a black colored pencil. Um, again, same thing, thinking about where the highlights are hitting, the shadows will be on the opposite side of whatever that form is. So like here on these legs closest to the body. We're gonna shade it out like that. Kind of let it fade off into the watercolor that we put down. And that really helps it look like that leg is kind of receding into the space under the body. Like that. And that's the basic idea for all of these legs. You know, it depends on how much time you have, but I would add a little bit, just a few lines down at the bottom of each one, like kind of under where the highlight is and closer to the end of that segment. Right here, right here and right here. And again, like we did on the red sections, these shaded lines aren't quite touching that ink line. It's leaving like a little mid highlight that really helps it look sh almost shiny um, and dimensional. For these skinny ones, I like to shade it right where it connects and then just Almost like could be one line, depending on how big your drawing is down that inside. And for the tarsal segments, just where they touch each other at the top. I'm just going to move kind of systematically through these. And if anyone has questions, I know I'm going a little fast on, on 
these parts. Um, just shout out. Once you kind of get an idea of where the shadow should go on one leg, you can kind of like extend that logic to all the other ones. Again, working in that really systematic way. It both speeds things up and helps things look. For the eyes, I want to make them like relatively dark. I think what I'm going to do is almost totally color them in with the black colored pencil, but really be strategic about where I'm leaving that watercolor gray. So I left that gray, oops, sorry, not on camera. I left that gray right along where it meets the head, but colored it in all the way at the edges. Really helps it stand out, look shiny. For the snout, the rostrum, I'm gonna go all the way up the side, skipping where the antenna connects. on the other side of that highlight. And then on the spade where it gets wider, I'm going to kind of envision that form. Again, these are all the keywords, envisioning form, think about where your light is coming from. I added a little bit of shadow on the bottom of where that piece narrows. And just like a little bit of a lighter touch on this side. Because it does, that form is turning in space. It's a round shape, but the light is hitting it strongly from the side. So it will be lighter than the first shadow that we drew. And on the antenna, I wouldn't shade too hard on these because there's so many little segments that we drew. It might get lost if you want to put just like a little touch at the bottom of each of those lines, you could. And again, on the left side. And you know what? I think we could call this drawing done, but uh, since I, I kept talking about adding that blue colored pencil, I'm going to try to do that. So let me just find that really quickly one second if anyone has questions now is a really good time to ask i would love to hear some voices so i heard your question obviously i responded to it i wrote the name down this is the rose curculio weevil um and i wrote curcula day down here because that is the um name of that larger group that includes weevils let me mm, i misspelled this don't write that one down. It's very similar. It's Percule Onidae. Percule Onidae, probably. As long as you say things with confidence, that's what matters. Percule Onidae. Um, but yes, this is the larger um, family of weevils, which are also called, you know, snout beetles. Um, okay, so let me add that blue in just really quick. I want to show you what adding like a color you think that might not go with this drawing will do. It actually can look really nice. Um, so I'm just adding like a really light layer of blue down in these shadow areas. And it just really helps add some like real world depth and value to the drawing. Because we see in a spectrum of colors, things are never just red and never just blue, never just green. Um, they're made up of many different colors kind of coming together, but we have a perception um, to generalize things, which is just helpful in describing. So I'm happy with that little blue addition. I'm glad that I went back and did that. One, one second.
Oh, I love that. <laughs> beautiful. Okay, I'm going to um, sign off now, but it was nice to see you all. And I'm glad you're here. And I had a lot of fun drawing this today. I hope you did too. <laughs>